Welcome to part one of our discussion of the Java Supplier Functional Interface. In this part of the lesson, we'll take a look at the structure and functionality of Supplier and show how it can be used in conjunction with Java Lambda expressions and method references. We'll take a look at a concise example that you can get in open source form from my GitHub repository at the link in the bottom of the slide. This particular example will showcase the use of Java Collection Framework's HashMap class, as well as the Java Optional class. So what's a supplier? A supplier can be used to return a value and take no parameters. Here's what the supplier interface looks like. It's parameterized by a single generic parameter T, and it has an abstract method called get that takes no direct parameters to its parameter list and returns an item of type T. So you can think of supplier as essentially a factory that makes something that can be consumed later on. Here's a simple example we'll take a look at that comes from my GitHub repository in the EX6 folder. This particular example is going to create a hash map, which is going to keep track of beings like demons and angels and wizards and so on, and their particular dispositions. Demons are naughty, angels are nice, perhaps wizards are wise, and so on and so forth. And this will be represented as a map. We're then going to get an input somewhere that will be the name of the being or the type of the being, demon, angel, wizard, and so on. Let's assume that we get that from a prompt from a user or a GUI or a file. Doesn't really matter for the purposes of our discussion. We're then going to go ahead and use an interesting factory method that's part of the Java optional class. Optional is a class that can be used, as we'll see, to avoid having to deal with null values. So what we're going to do here is we're going to use the of nullable method, and we're going to look up into the map, the being map, and see whether or not the being name or the being type we input is actually in the map or not. If it is in the map, we'll end up getting the disposition associated with it. But if it's not in the map, we're going to get back a null. And so the optional of nullable factory method will create an optional that will shield the user, shield the rest of the program from whether or not the get method that was called on the hash map return null. So you can think of an optional as essentially a container object, which may or may not contain a null value. But irrespective of that, you can use it without having to worry about null pointer exceptions. That's the beauty of optional. So what we're going to do down here in the actual usage part of our disposition optional is we're going to say disposition of being equals and then disposition.get. We're going to go ahead and print this out using the standard out println method. The or else get method is interesting. And what this does is it returns the value if the being is non null. However, if the being is null, it'll go ahead and return the supplier parameter that's passed to it. So if we would see when we look at the implementation in a moment, if it turns out that the, the disposition has a null value because being's type was not known in the map, then it's going to end up calling the supplier lambda to return the string unknown. So that'll be what gets printed out if we had essentially an empty optional. The or else get method is lazy. So it uses a supplier lambda parameter that's passed to it. So every time that gets invoked, it potentially could return a different value. So it could be changed dynamically. In contrast, we could have used the or else method, which is another method defined on optional. And this particular method just takes a value, in this case, a string. So as a consequence, it's what's known as an eager method as opposed to a lazy method. So that value will be set when the call is, is made. Let's take a look at how the or else get method is implemented in the Java optional class. And this will give us a chance to talk a bit about the supplier parameter that's passed to the or else get as an argument. As you can see here, a supplier is going to extend some type. And in this particular case, we're going to pass it in a Lambda supplier that will return the string unknown when it's invoked. So here's how things, that's how the, the value, that's how the parameter that's passed in is bound to the or else get parameter that we see here. So you can see what happens here is if the value is not null, then we return the value. Otherwise, if the internal value that the optional holds is null, which means that the, the being map didn't know anything about the type we passed into it, the way it works here is we say other.get, and other.get will go ahead and call the supplier lambda passed to it in order to get the result, which in this case, of course, would be the string unknown. So that's the end of part one of our discussion of the Java supplier functional interface.